Gary Vaynerchuk, or Gary V as he's known to his adoring fans, is the internet's monument to the excesses of hustle culture, and he has been taking advantage of his fans. Gary is worth an estimated $200 million and runs a popular internet marketing firm that, based on Glassdoor reviews, seems to survive by convincing young people to spend their youth earning bad money in the hopes that the Gary V halo effect will help their careers. Now, we should be clear, Glassdoor doesn't really verify their reviews, so it's possible these people didn't actually work there, but I think it shows you one portrait of how these people who allegedly work close to Gary find the experience. Gary V also has his own convention called VCon, which is very different than that con V, which is something I might shout out if I bought one of these to get in. Tickets for VCon were airdropped to purchasers of his V Friends Series 1 NFTs. If you were a fan of internet culture, you may remember V Friends as the NFT scheme he was able to successfully shill to Mr. Beast, and Mr. Beast was able to shill to other cryptocurrency stalwarts like Logan Paul in front of their adoring audience of young fans. So then I rolled the money into V Friends because I, Gary, same thing, called me. He's like, V Friends. I was like, I don't fucking know, but last time I made money, sure, sure. And, uh, I, so I I basically sold them all and moved the money in the VFR. I got a chance to talk about that a little more in depth when I was interviewing Mooncat on Crypto Critics Corner, so check that out after this if you want. If you want to get into VCon but you did not purchase one of those V Friends NFTs, you can still purchase tickets on the secondary market. Current floor price for those seems to be 0.22 Ether, which is a little over $300. Also. Every secondary market sale of these tickets nets Gary V an additional 5%, which is pretty nice for him. So why am I talking about VCon to you today? Is it because of the NFTs? I do sometimes gripe about NFTs, but not today. At least not primarily. If you make it to the end of the video, we'll take like 60 seconds to talk about the NFTs. Deal? We're talking about VCon because of some of their other practices. VCon is, and I'm reading this directly, a conference unlike any other for business, innovation, technology, marketing, and popular culture. We are talking about how Gary Vaynerchuk, who again is worth over $200 million, is staffing his convention. But first, we need to talk about how Gary has instilled in his followers this belief in the value of hustle. Mooncat referred to him as the youth pastor of capitalism in her excellent video, which feels like a particularly apt description. He evangelizes, and his entire message is largely that if you work hard enough, you can achieve things, which seems relatively harmless until you actually listen to him talk about it. He twists it into an entirely false thing where he uses this idea that working hard can lead to success to make claims like the internet solved racism. Mm. The internet fixed racism. Mm. Internet doesn't give a fuck if you're black, white, transgender from in Mars. It's a market. Or that being poor is an advantage. You know what I think is a better advantage than fucking being born into something? Being born into nothing. Both of which are untrue. I understand that he is trying to get at a message that is something like, your circumstances do not define you, and if you allow them to motivate you, then they may be the eventual reason for your success. But that does not at all address the very real and systemic barriers which exist for people that make it far harder for them to find success. What his messaging does do is convince his fans that effort will be rewarded, even if it doesn't seem like it at first. And importantly, if you do not achieve it, then it is your fault. This is very similar to a concept I talked about in a Crypto Critics Corner video, where I was talking about how cryptocurrency often acts as an avenue to radicalization, in part because of the way it traps people. It shows them examples of extraordinary wealth that people have achieved, and then gives them a message that if they fail to achieve it, it is in part their own fault. Multi-level marketing schemes often will echo a very similar message, and it's part of how they're able to get to their vulnerable marks. If you truly believe Gary, if you take him at his word, if you were one of his fans and you believe that anyone can achieve these things if they are willing to sacrifice enough and work hard enough, that means if you have not succeeded, then you are not sacrificing enough and you are not working hard enough, which is just not true. Success, no matter what, is in part luck and cannot be directly replicated. Many of the people who work the hardest over their entire lives will end up dying destitute. And again, there are very serious and systemic barriers that make success easier for some people than for others. The problem 
with looking at examples of success is that you are missing out on all the data included in the failures. In a famous example, Abraham Walt, a statistician during World War II, who was trying to figure out how to better reinforce bombers, realized that counterintuitively he did not want to reinforce the parts that were most hit, but the parts that were least hit, because the only planes he got to see were the surviving planes, and so the ones that got shot in certain places still were able to survive and make it back to base. If you focus too much on the examples of success and miss out on the failures, you will fail to notice that for every success, there is almost always a substantially identical story of someone who failed. We try to create these narratives and believe that success is driven by the unique attributes of the person succeeding because we all want success and if we get it, we want to believe it was a product of our unique goodness. But often, meaningful portions of success, if not the majority of it, is driven by happenstance and luck. Motivational speakers like Gary, though, rely on creating this vision of success and convincing everyone they will be able to achieve that outcome. Getting back to VCon. VCon posted this tweet recently. There was one word that really jumped out at me in that tweet, and yes, it was volunteer. This is supposedly an innovative business and technology and marketing and popular culture convention run by a centimillionaire. Why do they need volunteers? So I decided to click in and see what they were looking for. Oh, also for fun, I made an AI sound like Gary Vee to read these sections from the article. The voice is AI. You'll be able to see the words from the article. I'll put them up on screen. Just wanted to be upfront about that with you. Vicon tells you that if you volunteer, you will have the opportunity to connect with like-minded individuals, gain valuable experience, and contribute to the success of one of the most significant events in business, tech, and Web3 community. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. They continue further down. Stating that attending events has become a regular occurrence in our daily lives. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. Which is probably true for a lot of people. I've gone to events, though not many and not regularly. Though I am not typical, it continues with from festivals to conferences, we have seen it all. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. And again, I'm not the target here because those are things I generally try to avoid in favor of staring at a screen in my pitch black sound treated office. So again, not typical. It continues. However, experiencing behind the scenes is a whole new level of excitement. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. Which, again, I've never run an event anywhere near the size of Econ. But every event I was part of organizing in college was incredibly stressful and I did not find them exciting. But again, not the target market. Though perhaps the problem is I'm not fully appreciating the fact that the VCon volunteer program offers a unique opportunity to join the team connecting over 10,000 people in the Web3 business marketing industry. You will gain a front row seat to learn what it takes to put on a show and be a key player in providing the best experience for our community. Aside from contributing to the event's magic, You'll have the chance to network with like-minded individuals who share your passion for technology, meet industry leaders, field experts, and entrepreneurs, and engage in conversations to help you take the next step in your career. If you're looking to start making valuable connections, volunteering at VCon is the perfect way to do so. Join us now and be a part of something special. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. The heart of the pitch for VCon volunteers here seems to be that volunteering will allow you to network with all the other people who have decided to attend VCon when you aren't busy doing whatever it is you've been assigned to do, presumably. Though, even VCon recognizes that that's asking a lot of volunteers. However, your efforts will not go unnoticed, and you can also expect some perks in return. Free VCon staff shirt, an exclusive look into the future of business and Web3 and marketing. Amazing networking opportunities with game-changing speakers and companies. Plenty of experience to put on your resume. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. That's right. If you volunteer for the centimillionaire Gary V, they will give you a free t-shirt and experience. You'll give them hours of your labor. Let's scroll a little further back up in this article and see which parts of the convention need volunteers. Maybe it's not very many. Below are some of the teams you could consider joining. Talent, NFT land, V Friends Gallery, Field Day, Apparel, Operations, Media, Press. Also, I'm worth over $200 million. Oh, it's the entire fucking convention. 
basically every team I can think of that they would have for this convention is taking on this unpaid labor, is depending on this unpaid labor. And these people who are volunteering are volunteering at least in part because they have bought into the marketing shtick of Gary V. Work hard enough and eventually you will make it. And so people will volunteer for this because they see this as an opportunity to hustle and maybe make it. Gary is worth over $200 million. Gary is worth over $200 million. He is asking for skilled contributions across basically every team for the entire conference. For a convention branded entirely after him, open to people who bought an NFT with his branding that marketed itself as becoming his friend, V friends, and he now needs free labor from these same fans to make his convention work. And unfortunately, this isn't even a Gary V unique phenomenon. Any artist or creative watching this video is probably pointing at the scream and wanting to scream about the times they were offered to be paid in exposure rather than money. And many, especially when they were young or desperate, would take those deals in the hope of it eventually leading to the paid work that you need for things like rent, and groceries. You can even look at the existence of unpaid internships as the same thing, offering to pay people an experience for their labor. And for the record, I think unpaid internships are fucking exploitive. What I think makes Gary's more insidious is the exploitation of the parasocial relationship. Parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships, like the one you develop when you follow someone online and have this feeling of familiarity. It describes fans of many things, celebrities, influencers, it can even extend to bands or sports teams. And it's this belief that you really know this person, even though you've really only consumed their content and seen the thing they want to convey to you. Often, when you examine a Ponzi scheme, pyramid scheme, or multi-level marketing scheme, at the top is a charismatic leader who will speak at conventions to waves of adoring fans who are being promised that they will eventually make the wealth they dream of. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gary Angel! There are tons of neo-celebrities and influencers and YouTubers who have also realized that they can take advantage of this parasocial relationship in ways that vary from the uncomfortable to the reprehensible. Hell, the reason that companies pay for influencers to do sponsored posts and for YouTubers to do ads and podcasters to do ad reads is because they work pretty well. And part of the reason they work pretty well is because of this pre-existing relationship with the person doing the ad read. You, the audience, are more likely to see it and the product they are endorsing positively because you have this built-up sense of familiarity with the creator. Exploitation of these parasocial relationships also, in a sense, includes the celebrities, influencers, and YouTubers using these parasocial relationships to take advantage of their fans sexually. This is a common problem, and it's really just because parasocial relationships effectively are a way to accumulate power over people, and people take advantage of power. Gary V uses it to get people to work his convention for free, and Mr. Beast uses his parasocial relationships to make sure that his products look as good as possible on the Walmart shelves. You see, after reading this VCon plea for unpaid labor, I was reminded of this recent tweet from Mr. Beast. He asked his 18.9 million Twitter followers to please help out his business by using their time to improve how his product looked on the shelf. Now, after a couple days of backlash, Mr. Beast recognized this might threaten the Mr. Beast brand and decided that he was going to make a donation to charity. The classic rich person solution to bad publicity. Listen, I'm not going to pretend having people fix your candy bars is the worst exploitation. It obviously isn't. I also won't pretend having unpaid volunteers at your convention is the worst exploitation. Though considering even the operations team needs volunteers, there's some things that could end up hilarious here. I think both of these cases just are specific examples of people who cultivate these parasocial relationships, taking advantage of them for unpaid labor. Both of them have also cultivated their audiences by showing these extraordinary paths to success. Gary's focus is on working endlessly until you make it, and the fact that that often centers around creating content, which is not a great path towards a sustainable lifestyle for most people. Mr. Beast does it more directly by having a bunch of people touch a briefcase full of money until one of them gets it. In both cases, these are not reliable or replicatable paths to success 
or wealth for most people, but they make it seem that way to their audience, which helps deepen this parasocial relationship. Gary Vaynerchuk is a centimillionaire. He can afford to pay people working for him. He should not take advantage of the fact that he has convinced his fans that they will be rewarded for this eventually. He should pay them for their work now. To everyone out there, you deserve to be compensated for your efforts. Now, I promised you 60 seconds on NFTs, so let's take a quick look at the NFTs. This is the Podcaster Panther, which, as a podcaster, I was curious about. It once sold for 120 Ether, which at the time was worth about $348,000. Currently, it is for sale for 23.9 Ether, or about $33,600. That's about a 90% crash in price in dollar terms. However, currently the best offer for it is only 13.5 Ether, or about $19,000. That's a 95% decrease in price. Paying to be friends with Gary hurts sometimes, doesn't it? Least it gets you into VCon though, right? Gary also had another NFT series called Book Games. And to get that one, you had to buy 12 physical copies of his book. And since that one was given out to people who bought books, it was never really as popular. If you try to access the Book Games website on the vFriends website, it currently returns an Air 500 or an internal server Air. Clearly, Gary cares about this line of NFTs and is putting effort into them right now. This collection is far less valuable because, again, they were given away for free. Here's an example of one of the most valuable ones, though. It, again, remember, was created by the guy who called his media company Vaynerchuk Media, his NFT collection V Friends, and his convention VCon. It's named Humility is Delicious. And yes, this is the real quality. This is one of the ones that had a reasonably good sale at one point for one whole ether, which was worth about three grand. Now the best offer is 0.045 ether or about 60 bucks. 98% decline. Brutal. Okay, I think your 60 seconds are up. Thank you all for joining. And remember, you should absolutely be paid for your labor, especially when you are working for a centimillionaire.